Hello everyone, how's everyone doing? Well, I hope. Today we're going to be talking about my Underground C. So, this is actually a card that I play all the time. You, you play with your cards? You don't lock them up in a vault and just stare at them and do naughty things to yourself while you look at them? Yes, I play most of the cards that I'll be showing all of you guys. And we actually have a brand new one that I'm very excited about. I was able to sell enough old cards from the old box openings in my prior collection to my YouTube channel and a bunch of things to get this card. Worked a lot of overtime and I earned it. Also on top of that, stay tuned, subscribe if you want to see some Commander Masters get open because when that sets come out we're going to be on those collector boxes like nobody's business but anyway back to the card i play this right now i did play it in a dual commander which is just 1v1 commander with its separate ban list and you start at 20 life i played this in a traxa super friends stacks kind of deck control and since i've been getting into four player commander i've been playing it in thrasios timna a version where instead of adnaz you still win with Thassa's Oracle, Demonic Consultation effects, Tainted Pact effects, but you take turns instead of add Nos, and it's supposed to add a mid-range flare to it, a lot of upkeep triggers, Sylvan Library, Exploration, Fill Your Hand, if you still play Seedborn Muse, uh, Mirari's Wake kind of deals. I'll do a deck tech on that in the future. I think that would actually make for a very good video. It's a very interesting deck. It's a little outside the box. You don't really see people uh, play turns in CEDH. And I think there's a lot of good reasons for that. But I think if you can really get away with the game and you just turn after turn after turn, especially with Nexus of Fate effects, if you have an effect like Sylvan Library or you have ascertained the mana, which is pretty easy in CEDH between Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, playing Thrasios as your commander, Training Grounds, Thrasios, all the ramp cards you have access to in green, and at this point the other colors, along with all those colorless rocks. It's an underutilized strategy. I do see the appeal of playing Adnaz and playing an Asnaz list, Adnaz list with uh, this commander, because really Tim is just there to bait counter magic. <laughs> but I see the appeal of playing that, but I think turns instead, as you play a different approach to it, and it also gets counter spells out of people's hands, and if they don't counter it, then you just zero mana draw a card, play land, and go from there. So it's it's hard to beat it. People usually don't want to counter them, because nothing good happens. And then if they're countering that, they're not countering your Thassa's Oracle or whatnot, and you're getting closer to a silence effect. Or Captain Ranger Captain of Eos effect. But that's for another day. We're here to talk about Underground Sea. Now, Underground Sea is probably going to be the most expensive dual land, probably ever, unless they have some sort of maniac meta change for Commander, which, with some of the new cards they're printing, does not seem that out of the loop especially for red cards. Red cards between, well, excuse me, between Ragavan and Dockside Extortionist and all the new white stacks pieces, your opponent draw searches their library, you draw a card, and I think you gain a life. And all these other effects that lets you mirror ramp spells and uh, white and red are getting a lot of good tools, which I think could push these other kinds of dual lands but i'll believe it when i see it underground c by the way i bought this one for 441 dollars and 51 cents i'm actually going to take it out the sleeve um raise this up i took the other card out the sleeve uh these every card i show you is authentic i have uh, scale checked them i have a jeweler's loop i actually got this off amazon it's very nice loop, works extraordinary for this. The back's a little dinged up, like uh, most cards. However, 
the front is pretty icy. Some little uh, coloring and dirt and crud at the top, but it's it's pretty clean, especially in a sleeve. It's good enough for me. But these cards uh, hold a lot of value to me. I'm very happy to own them. I'm very happy the reserve list exists, even though I'm not a bajillionaire and I won't make millions upon trillions of dollars off these cards. I'm glad that the hobby that I so love has an opportunity for me to dump some capital and own a really cool, interesting piece of history. So I want people to remember this when my YouTube channel inevitably is making me stacks. <laughs> that I was preaching this while I had a day job, while I was an electrician, busting my ass. I talk about how many how my hours work on my fitness channel where I do push-ups in a mile every day. Right now we're doing 120 push-ups every day and we're on day 130. There's some intervals. I'll tell you right now, there's some intervals. I had a heart virus I went to the hospital for. I have footage of me in the hospital. And I also had some ulnar nerve things. I have some doctor's notes and blah, blah, blah. But I had some nerve damage. So we really only take breaks for injury, although I will admit it's not consistent. We haven't broken the mile streak yet, but I'm getting way too ahead of myself. These are some cornerstone staples of CEDH. I also think, however, they're the least important cards to own when it comes to CEDH. Honestly, having an underground C in your deck does not make your deck that much better. It truly just does not. Unless your deck is an ad nauseum deck, the advantage they provide, just truthfully and honestly, isn't that much. That's why I suggest if you're a player first and not an investor, I get they're amazing, they're cool, they're absolutely beautiful. The artwork on there is just incomparable. The, the unique box pattern in the text box, it, I didn't like it at first, but it's growing on me. They're nice and amazing to have as investables, but if you're a player looking to breach into the reserve list and sort of start picking at it, these are really overpriced for the power they add to your deck. Like, you can get a lightly played this, or you can get a lightly played Gaia's Cradle. And, yeah, Underground Sea is blue and black, and Gaia's Cradle is green, so they're not completely comparable, but... We know which one is the better card. I just think that they're practically for an investor only. I don't think that as a player you really need them. Maybe that's just uh, grass is always greener sort of <laughs> philosophy. But as someone that has a, a good decent collection of just mid reserveless cards and also the really powerful ones that are not dual lands. I, I just, they, what they add to a deck isn't that serious. It just doesn't matter that much. And it, unless you have an Ad Nauz deck and all the fetch lands, it really doesn't make your deck any more powerful. Like, what, you fetch land, you, you saved two life when you start at 40? <laughs> if life's your concern and you play life game, you play Olrun. You still have access to Thassa's Oracle, Demonic Consultation, Tainic Pact. And you get the life gain to offset it. And you can argue, yeah, you, well, you play the dual ends in that. So you have just more life. But it's like, come on, bro. Saving two life just isn't that important. And especially if your pod is not even that extremely high power level, just play Triomes. And if you ever are fetching and you don't need the mana, just pull a Triome out. And then you have an additional color. It, it, it really just isn't, it's not like playing Gaia's Cradle in your Prosh deck. It's not like playing Sarah's Sanctum in your uh, Sithis deck. The, this, these cards, these dual lands, will not provide you with the power necessary to evolve your deck. They're not that important as a player. 
As an investor, that's a different story. People always look for these. These are legacy, vintage, commander, legal. They'll always be sought after. They'll always be looked for. But I'm telling y'all, if you're just a player, they're not that important. As someone that owns them and will be making videos about them, I promise their authenticity. I have my receipts. I've had the same TCG player account since I started playing Magic. It, they don't matter. As a player, they don't matter. Unless you really got it like that. You, you're putting in the hours. You got a great job. You went to college. You, you, you do a trade. You scam people online. <laughs> you know? It, it, it's just... If you're a player, buy other cards. If you're an investor, you need them. And that, that's really all I'm going to say moving forward. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, subscribe if you want to see some Commander Masters get opened. And I'll be doing plenty of these sort of videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching this far. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.